In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to create a simple photo postcard in PaintShop Pro with a background, decorations, and text, and of course, a family photo. I'll be creating a holiday greeting card, but you can use the same techniques for any occasion. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. The first step is to decide what size my card will be and whether it will be printed or shared electronically. A digital image would have no size limitations, but for print, I need to start with the size in mind. There are thousands of printing services, both online and in stores, where I would generally find clear instructions about photo sizes, resolution, file formats, and how to upload. But for my example, I plan to print at home using a pre-formatted template that has space for two 4x6 images. At the end of the tutorial, I'll show how to add the image I create to the template. I've gathered the photo and other content I want to use for my card, and I've placed them in a single folder on my computer. You don't have to have everything in one place, but this makes it easier to use the organizer in PaintShop Pro. In PaintShop Pro, I'm in the Edit space, and I'll click the New icon. In the Photo section, I'll choose 4x6 print, keep the resolution at 300 pixels per inch, and click OK. To bring in the photo I want to use, I'll choose File Open, and I'll keep it open here for reference. I can also use the organizer for easy access to everything. I'll right click in a blank toolbar area and choose Palettes, Organizer. Then in the organizer, I'll click the navigation icon and browse to the folder where I have my content. The organizer can take up a lot of screen space, so I can auto hide it by clicking the pin icon to unpin it. Then I can temporarily open the organizer by hovering over its tab, or I can click the pin again to keep it open. I also want to make sure that my layers and materials palettes are open. If they weren't, I could find them in the same palettes menu. The materials palette has several sets of colors that work nicely together, and for my card, I'm going to use colors from the Cool Neutral palette, which will look nice with my photo. The first thing I want to do is add the snowflake background. With the empty card image active, I'll drag the snowflake image out of the organizer and add it just above the transparent raster layer. The pattern size is too large, so I'll activate the pick tool and scroll down to zoom out and expand the window until I can see the borders of this image. Now I can drag corners to resize and move the whole background to fit the space. The background is a bit strong, so I'll choose Adjust, Hue and Saturation, Hue Saturation Lightness. Preview on image is checked, so I can see changes in real time. Lowering the saturation washes it out a bit, I'll increase the lightness, and I'll keep the hue as is. My photo will go in the left side of the card, but first I want to create a frame for it. For the rectangle I'm about to create, Using the photo as a color reference for the frame colors, I'll right-click a swatch to set the fill color, and left-click to set the outline color. Now I'll open the Shape Tools flyout and choose Rectangle, set the stroke width at 10 pixels, and drag the two corners of the photo frame. I now have another new layer, and because the rectangle is a vector object, this is a vector layer. Next comes the cutout space for the photo, and there are a couple of ways to do this. For the first method, I'll use the Frame tool, introduced in PaintShop Pro 2022, as a quick and easy technique for placing photos into shapes. I'll use the Rectangle option and draw an inner rectangle for the photo. This tool creates a frame layer group with a sublayer where the photo will go. I could center the frame to the rectangle by eye, but to make it exact, I'll go back to the Pick tool, select both layers while holding the Control key, and use the two Align Center options. Now from the organizer, I'll drag the photo straight into the frame, and the photo is sized and centered automatically. The photo also appears in the frame layer group. Let's say I'm working in PaintShop Pro 2021 or lower, and don't have the frame tool. I can use a mask to create the photo opening, which produces the same results, but with a few more steps. First, I'll right-click on the frame layer group and delete it. I still have the rectangle, and to make an inner rectangle for the photo, I'll first select the rectangle with the Magic Wand tool, then choose Selections, Modify, Contract. The offset distance will be 40 pixels, 
and now I have the cutout space for the photo. I need a new layer for this selected space, so I'll choose Selections, Promote Selection to Layer, and this new layer is at the top. I now need to create a mask, or blackout area, from this new rectangle. At the bottom of the Layers palette, I'll click the Mask icon and choose Show Selection. The white section of this mask layer is where the photo will show through. I'll press Ctrl D so that the inner rectangle is no longer selected, and from the organizer, I'll drag the photo just below the mask. I'll switch to the Pick tool, make sure the photo layer is still selected, and resize and move. New items will be placed on layers above the selected layer, and I don't want the text I'm about to create to be inside the mask, so I'll make the mask group active. For the greeting message at the top of the card, I'll activate the text tool, and from the font dropdown, I'll find something bold and festive. I'll right click a swatch to set the font color. To start the text, I'll click near the top and start writing, and double click when finished. Now I can resize and move. I want to add my greeting text in the lower right corner, on top of a new rectangle. I don't want this rectangle to be added to the current vector layer, so I'll click New Layer and add a new vector layer. For the fill color, I can click the fill swatch, and then use the eyedropper to pick up a color already in the image. I'll add a rectangle with this fill color and no stroke width, and reduce the opacity of this new layer so that the background shows through. I could leave this area blank, so that I could write in a message by hand on each printed card. Or I can add a new vector layer for text, activate the text tool, with a new font and size, and the correct color. When the text icon has brackets, I'll be filling in the vector shape. After double-clicking to finish the text, I'll center it, then click the More Options icon in the toolbar, and adjust the leading so that the text fits in the rectangle. Now for a few decorations. I'll drag up from the organizer the image that has a few snowflake graphics on a transparent background. With the selection tool, I'll drag around one symbol and press Ctrl C to copy. Then with the photo card image active, I'll press Ctrl V to paste, go back to the pick tool in order to resize and move, and rotate it just a bit. Then I'll choose a new color from the palette, activate the color changer tool, and click any snowflake pixel to change the color of the entire snowflake. To make this graphic stand out, while its layer is still selected, I'll choose Effects, 3D Effects, Drop Shadow, and adjust horizontal and vertical offsets. After repeating these steps to add a few more snowflakes, I'm all done. Now it's time to print. For digital sharing or printing, the most popular format is JPEG. But if I want to preserve these layers for making changes later, I should first choose File, Save As, and save a PSP image. Now I can also save a JPEG, which will collapse all layers into a single layer, and produce a pretty reasonable file size while preserving the resolution. As I mentioned before, I want to print at home, and I already chose my template, which is by Avery. I can find hundreds of templates by choosing File, Print Layout, then clicking Open Template. Under Avery, the one I want is here, which contains space for two 4x6 images. I can print two different images, or the same one twice on the same page. I'll just drag my card image into both slots, and the Print button is right here. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on creating a holiday photo card in PaintShop Pro. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, You'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.